Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, everybody. My name is Eben O'Sullivan, and it is my privilege to act as moderator of this session of the International Water Summit, hosted by Mazda in parallel with the World Future Energy Summit. Uh, this is a wonderful event, and we've covered an extraordinary amount of territory since we, it was opened yesterday morning. I'd like to thank all those that made this summit possible, and particularly to our speakers. Now, this session is going to be turning to one of the more testing frontiers for the water industry, which is uh, the industrial challenge to deal with the, uh, the needs of growing industry across the region and dealing with its effluent. Now, I have, we have four panelists in this session, exceptional professionals working different elements of uh, the uh, manufacturing water industry uh, here in the region and elsewhere. So, as you look at the stage, uh, on your left hand, delighted to welcome Hazem Abu Ahmed, advisor, advisor for environmental protection in the Environment Department of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. The National Company of Abu Dhabi, one of the world's largest and most ambitious oil and gas producing companies and a critical element of the global energy industry. As you move across to the right, next is Dr. Alp Saryojlu. He's the Water Solution Director at Akim. He's based in uh, Turkey. And uh, Akim is a technology and uh, service and technology provider. Uh, as we move further, uh, Dr. Klaus Konzelman is Technical Director of Nestle Waters Asia, Middle East and Africa. And finally, on our extreme right, I'm delighted to welcome the stage a good friend uh, and an exceptional water professional, Dr. Tissio Demes, who is Water for Industry Leader in Arcadis, the international consultancy firm. So will you please welcome our panelists? I know what we're going to do in the less than 25 minutes now uh, is that I'm going to invite each of the panelists to answer more or less the same question. So I'll ask it once, so I don't have to waste time asking it individually, so you, you can do the message. And, I, and the, the first, I, I think it's useful for everybody to know a little about, about the, the organisations you work for and the role, uh, your influence in water, you know, how important is water to you. Uh, secondly, what, what kind of solutions do you got your water challenges, both water inputs and water outputs? Uh, what are you going to be doing soon or next? I mean, not long-term stuff, but what are you going to do maybe in 2017 or even 2018 to address those questions? And how can people in this room, finally, you can in, invite people in the room to help you to address your challenges? Because people here from different sides of the industry will probably like to know how they can help you achieve the goals you've got. I think that's a reasonably summary. So I'm going to start off with uh, the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, uh, with massive oil production capacity onshore and offshore. And so, um, Hazem, please have a go at those questions. Is this on? You're on. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Good afternoon. Um, a brief introduction, about five minutes. Um, that's all I have. I had a presentation which will be available to anybody who wants it later on. I thought I was going to be delivering a presentation, but... Um. All presentations uh, will be made available to all delegates, uh, and you'll be sent an email which will give you instructions how to download them. So all the presentations will be available, including Hazem's. Okay. Um, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, it's uh, one of the largest oil and gas producers in, uh, worldwide. Uh, our operations uh, throughout the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, onshore and offshore. I mean, I had a, um, if the, you know, Abu Dhabi itself, the island, is one of ethnic concession areas for oil and gas. Uh, our, we have almost 18 plus operating companies that they, uh, um, they, um, they from, from seismic operations to drilling, to uh, extraction, ex exploration of production, uh, to uh, natural gas <coughs> natural gas processing, refining, uh, fertilizing companies, uh, poly, um, poly elephants companies, our company, and uh, we have our own uh, shipping companies uh, for crude oil and natural gas. Plus we have our own uh, support vessels and uh, tugboats and what have you. 
In addition to that, we have uh, uh, academic institutions, Petroleum Institute, uh, Adnoc Training Institute for future operators. Uh, Adnoc itself is a holding company. We don't operate any sites. Our companies do that. So we at Adnoc, uh, we, uh, we um, uh, health safety and environment began in Adnoc in the early 90s. Uh, the first guideline was issued in 1994. And, um, Based on that, our group of companies start developing their own HSC procedures to implement our own guideline. In 1997, we adopted the International Oil and Gas Producers Association framework for health, safety, environmental management system management, we call it HSCMS, which is our framework for regulating HSC related issues to our operations. Um, when we started in the early 90s, there was, no, there was no environmental laws in the UAE. The first, the federal environmental law was published in 1999. So we were ahead of the game. We were implementing HSC uh, um, best practices and procedures without any requirements being mandated on us. We self-governed self our own operations as that no corporate. We, we govern our own operations when it comes to HSC, reporting to the Supreme Petroleum Council of Abu Dhabi. Um, part of our um, uh, requirements is for any, any a new project or any expansion project, it has to undergo a health, safety, environmental impact assessment study, you know, which is not common worldwide. So HSCIA is the, is the tool for any new project or expansion project. EIA is, is part of that. In an EIA, we address um, um, conservation of natural resources, Efficient, what, uh, efficient use of uh, natural resources, identify all the hazards, assess the impacts, uh, control and mitigate the risks. Um, so, uh, um, and, when, and, 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 and the same token, our operations, they, um, we, do, we do need water, we extract water, and for, and I'll go over it real quick. At the same time, we, we discharge the water. So we wanna make sure when we discharge the water back to the, to the sea, that it may, it, we don't pollute the sea because we're going to be drawing back from it. And plus, Abu Dhabi itself needs water because of the desalination plants. That's, that's, the, that's the resource of for desalination. You, we spoke earlier and I yeah. asked the question, is that not the bigger, biggest user I said of water no. in Abu Dhabi? I said no. Uh, according to the 1995 uh, data, which we published our own annual sustainability report, and uh, we reported and, uh, uh, by... Uh, by um, uh, we adopt, in the past we used to uh, publish our own HSC report, now we call it sustainability, and we, 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 uh, we're doing it in, um, by reporting on, on, on elements according to GRI. Um, I don't know the, the, the abbreviation right now, just um, it doesn't come to me. I know the standard, uh, uh, standard reporting mechanism, GRI is the global, uh, uh, for, for, forgive me for that. Um, we, we, publi uh, we, we extract almost 5 billion cubic meter of water a year. From the ground? And, and, and from all sources? For all sources. 99% of that is seawater, and it's being used for, as cooling water, and passes through our process in a closed loop, and it goes back to sea. So 99% of 5 billion, which is, all, I'll say, almost, let's say we extract 5.1 billion, 5 billion goes back to sea. And the, only, the, only, uh, the only amounts that we use internally in processing in, 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 in operation is 16 million cubic meter per year. Okay, and what are, the, what are the big challenges you've got from an environmental and sustainability point of view uh, with those enormous amount of water you're taking and putting back? What are the big number one priority actually, we, for you? Uh, yeah, actually, um, with that, I mean, we, we don't find, because in a way we are cleaning the sea, if you want to put it that way, because we get seawater, we, 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 we filter it, we use it, and then we put it back to sea. Okay. Okay. The challenge is, is um, uh, most of our operations on the shoreline uses the seawater for cooling. Inland, there's no water, so uh, we, we end up extracting water from groundwater. Right. Okay. And then and Emirates of Abu Dhabi doesn't have much fresh water, only there's a place called Liwa yep. area, Liwa Aquifer. It's a fresh water, uh, um, it's about 40 meter thickness, the lens, from 40 uh, to 50 uh, meter, uh, 40 to 80, it's about, uh, the, the lens of the water, and it's about two kilos wide. Uh, and this is up to 40 meter deep below gro ground level. We extract water from uh, for the brackish zone. Right. Brackish zone, which is, has 15,000 
TDS and above milligrams. So we, we, we extract water from, uh, from about 200 feet, uh, um, 200 feet below ground, which is brackish water. We, we clean it, yep. we filter it, and we use it for our own processing units in onshore. And then what do you do when you've used it? Uh, when I've used it, um, it wouldn't be much left. I mean, uh, it gets treated and used for irrigation around the right. facilities. So you've got a kind of... So we do a greenery around the... It's, the it's almost a closed loop. You're putting it back on putting the ground. Back and, yeah. and then um, we don't use the water chillers, uh, uh, the normal water chillers. We use fin-fan coolers, okay. Okay? so it does not consume water. For drilling, we, we extract um, uh, brackish water as well. Uh, we talk about 100,000 100, TDS almost, and so we clean it and we use it for drilling. And then, um, and, and, and everybody knows about oil and gas operations. You get a lot of produced water that comes out from the fields. Yeah. These produced waters, um, uh, the, the dirty because it's chlorides, sulfates, uh, H2S gas, uh, red nickelides in them, uh, we re-inject them back into in the disposal zone, which is about 4,000 feet below ground. Or we use it for as an enhanced oil recovery to recover more oil. In the future, right now we are looking at the studies that's taking place now is to kind of to clean up this produced water to use it for other purposes. Okay, well, look, look okay. I, I, I'm going to have to move okay. on, uh, and that is an enormous. So, uh, Adnoc, massive water user, uh, massive need, massive disposal, big challenges in terms of using the groundwater, making sure that's done in a sustainable way, yes. and cleaning up the water that's been used for reinjection. I'm sure there's other things, yes. but I'm going to move on okay. to our next. Okay. Panelists, Dr. Alps Ali Oshli, uh, the same question, but I think more specifically because you're based in Turkey uh, and you're dealing with a global market. Um, from your perspective, um, what is the, in, in essence the, the challenge, the technical challenge that the water industry faces and how can it address? Okay, thank you. Uh, so when we talk about water as normal, uh, in our normal, regular uh, daily life, we always think about water we are consuming at home, for washing, for uh, cooking, for car washing, etc. But in fact, if we look to the world's average, is that 70% uh, of the water is used for agriculture, 10% uh, in average for domestic use, and the rest 20% for industry. And when we talk about the industry, there are things that we don't see, and it's when you look to the water footprint, it becomes really impressive. Imagine that a pair of shoes requires eight ton to produce, to be produced, or a simple t-shirt, 4.5 uh, tons. So this is all about the industry. And uh, we should think about to reuse this uh, water. And uh, if I take the average water consumption in Turkey for domestic, agricultural, and industrial, it's about, uh, in 2014, it was about 14.7 billion cubic meter. But you will be impressed that 12.7 uh, billion of cubic meter water uh, has been discharged without any treatment in wow. Turkey. And you can imagine the yeah. economics under that. Yeah. If I take only the industrial water used in Turkey, 84% of it has been discharged. But we are very lucky because we are well surrounded by the sea, by the agency, Black Sea, uh, Mediterranean, which means that 77% of this water has been discharged to the sea. Uh, so, untreated. Untreated, unfortunately. And uh, as we know, today it's very, very uh, possible to reuse this water, especially when you, we go to the membrane technologies. And, uh, in the beginning, we think that the membrane technology investment cost is very high, but if we consider a water plant, including the membrane technology, requires between 500 to 600 US dollar for a capacity of one cubic meter a day. So the biggest consumption on that is on the energy again, which was uh, one of the biggest subjects uh, this morning. Your, uh, the 21% of your uh, cost, water reuse cost, will be on the energy. If I take the European water prices, the European average is about 3.1 US dollar per cubic meter. And the score, uh, the winner is uh, for sure Denmark with 5.5 US dollar the cubic meter. And uh, the best practice is in Spain for 1.5 US dollar. 
if we think that the cost of the reused water is about 0 0.75 to 0 0.85 US dollar the cubic meter, it makes sense to reuse this water. Yeah. And this is what we are doing in our group of companies where we are producing acrylic fiber, carbon fiber, and chemicals. We have built a water treatment plant of 16,000 cubic meter a day, uh, where now we are working on the reuse of this water. And that makes sense for all the industrial to reuse their water and use the reused water. Very good. And the, uh, the pricing that was referred to, of course, is a European pricing, but it's a good shadow price, alternative yes. price. If you're trying to get a true opportunity cost for water, that's not a bad figure, which completely demonstrates that using a process, a re, uh, treated water in industry makes economic sense in the broader, uh, broader scale it's translating into action. Now, I'm going to talk to Dr. Klaus Konzelman, a technical director of Nestle Waters Asia, Middle East and Africa. And uh, you're a big user of water, but tell us about what it means to you and how you deal with it. Right. Yeah, so Nestle is obviously the world's largest uh, food company. Right. With Nestle Waters, we are also the largest right. bottled water company, so we're in the business of producing these kinds of products here. Contrary to uh, what you might see, we are actually a relatively small user of water compared to oil and gas, but since it is visible and the brand name is uh, uh, written on it, obviously we are very much in the public's uh, uh, focus. Uh, we define our business as uh, healthy hydration, uh, contributing to a healthier future, uh, and um, our focus on healthier be uh, beverages. We don't see ourselves as competing with tap water. Uh, we believe drinking more water is good for your health wherever it comes from. We are more competing with other um, packaged uh, beverages, uh, including things like uh, uh, coffee, where we are also the world's leader uh, through brands like uh, uh, Nescafe. So water is a core resource for our business, and therefore we have to uh, look after its sustainability. We have, over the last 10, 15 years, developed a comprehensive uh, water stewardship strategy that obviously starts uh, at the core with water efficiency in our own factories. And what we've started to do uh, several years ago is uh, um, to uh, first do a detailed water mapping to identify where the losses are, where the improvement opportunities are, and then bit by bit tackling them. Uh, where we use purified and remineralized water as opposed to uh, natural mineral water uh, and using therefore uh, reverse osmosis, uh, we've been uh, um, optimizing reverse osmosis and uh, up to the scaling limits uh, and reach now between 80 and 90 percent uh, efficiency we reuse water for industrial services, and in some particular cases in highly water-stressed areas, we're also using leading-edge technologies like a difficult-sounding one, vibrating, shear enhanced processing, which basically uh, leads to a zero or near-zero liquid uh, uh, discharge. With all of that, over the last six years in Nestle Waters here in the Middle East Africa Asia region, uh, while more than doubling our production and sales volumes, uh, we have uh, cut in half the losses and processes wa uh, process water, which means that for every liter of water which we put into a bottle, uh, we reduce the additional water from 0 0.8 liter to 0 0.4 liters. Good. Right. Well, there, there were three questions that you were going to ask yourself, Klaus. And right. And okay, I can't yeah. remember what they so, are. Uh, the, the one, I mean, I might expect the moderator to ask you would be, well, is, is that economical? Uh, does that pay off? Uh, and uh, the, the answer to this question, obviously, would be actually no. Uh, all that we're doing in water efficiency is not really... Uh, having a good financial payback uh, short term. So two questions again to that. Uh, well, why is it not paying off? And uh, contrary to what we hear a bit from the European situation, uh, where water already has a certain fair price, in many parts of the world, especially in Asia, also in the Middle East and Africa, uh, the value of water is not yet reflected adequately by its price. So very unusually for a commercial enterprise for a business, we are actually actively advocating for an increase in water prices, especially in those uh, parts of the world where it's too, uh, uh, too low. And now why would we be doing that? Well, again, two reasons for it. Uh, the one is short term. Um, since we are one of the 
best known consumer uh, facing companies, whatever we do is subject to immense scrutiny by, um, by civil society. If we get things wrong, and occasionally we do get things wrong as well, we've got Greenpeace and other NGOs all over the place, quite literally speaking. A few years ago we had them at our annual shareholder meeting. And uh, so we need to be uh, cleaner than clean in what we're doing in terms of compliance, in terms of uh, performance. Uh, however, smaller competitors uh, who may not have the same standards or the same scrutiny may get away with uh, sort of lesser performance. Uh, that is why we actually advocate not only higher prices for water, but also better regulation and better enforcement of regulation in order to uh, um, make life a bit uh, uh, tougher for the free riders and to get them also to uh, improve. And the second reason, uh, that's more long term uh, and even more important, it's really doing the right thing. Nestle has, is now 150 years as old as a company, and we're not managing our company for just for the next quarter. We're managing it to be still a successful company in 150 years from now. And for doing that, we realized that even if we would be the most efficient water user in our own factories, since in no specific case we actually are the exclusive user in the watershed we operate. There are others that also tap into the water. And if everyone around us, or many around us, are still very inefficient, water levels still drop, uh, which will endanger and put at risk our own long-term business model. So what we've been doing, what uh, is very uncomfortable for most engineers, in fact, we're stepping out beyond the uh, four walls of our factories, uh, and we've started to engage with all the other water users in the watersheds where we operate in order to improve the governance uh, and uh, the, the water stewardship across all the different users to make water sustainable for the long term for all of society. Thanks very much, Klaus. Uh, I'm going to ask Tissia to, 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 as the consultant to sum up and be the philosopher of the session. Um, but whilst, when she's doing that, perhaps the other panellists can ask a final question in a lot of time, which is what would you like to see change? One thing you'd like to see change in the next 12 months, say. Uh, to help you do your job better as far as water is concerned. And that could be here in the UAE or the region or in Turkey or anywhere else. So, Tissia, just your comments on the issue and um, how you would sum up what you feel is necessary. Uh, yeah, I work for, for Arcades and it's uh, like a, a global design consultant. We have 20,000 uh, people. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Uh, 20,000 people worldwide uh, working for us and uh, I especially focus on the water for industry so we do a lot of uh, uh, water audits for a lot of different type of industries so what you already uh, heard is that uh, there's a lot of different industries and they will use water in a different way some industries need cooling water some need to produce steam uh, so some already reused, some have their own regulations like ADNOC for TSC, for uh, treatment, for reuse within the, the, for their own industry. So I think the central world, world in this is uh, like it's integrated water management. What you need to do is uh, look at all your water streams and uh, see where you can get actually benefits uh, for, from it. And it might not always be uh, directly a translation into a, a profit uh, or a cost reduction. But on the long term, you'll be uh, uh, yeah, more stable. You'll be a better business. You have, uh, you know, you, you are less um, reliant on external water sources, for instance. And also, yeah, there's a lot of constraints that still need to be overcome. I think at this point in time, there's a, a, a lack of leg legislation on uh, on water and on the discharge of wastewater effluent, also for industry in a lot of countries and also here they can uh, discharge to the sewer and it's not really seen as an opportunity at this time if you reduce your water you have more increased uh, uh, pollution and you, you might even be able to use uh, like anaerobic digestion to actually get energy out of it uh, so there's a yeah, lack of water police again <laughs> and uh, yeah this needs to be thought over i think and defined Good. And, and, and what are what are the issues you, i thought you had a half but you said there were six issues, six? Oh, uh, constraints, the constraints. Uh, issues that you think, yeah, we discussed this before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let me ask that question. Uh, what are the, do you think are the main issues that preventing um, companies such as represented on this panel and the room who use water in different way, 
what do you think are the issues that are stopping them doing what you're recommending? Yeah, I think it's a lack of awareness, uh, lack of legislation then, uh, you, you have their lack of incentive, um, a pricing issue, uh, you might have to invest first before you get any return, and um, uh, what else <laughs> can I think of? Uh, okay, yeah, so this, this in terms of regulation, and I'm going to press you on this one, Tissia. <laughs> on the presence of regulation, Abu Dhabi has a well-established environmental commi commitment what are the strengths and weaknesses of the water regulation as far as industrial users are concerned here in Abu Dhabi? Uh, what you, you can't hear me, can you? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Well, I, the, the strengths and weaknesses of the regulatory code yeah, the regulation. for water in the industrial sector here in Abu Dhabi. You mean wastewater or water? Uh, well, uh, water well. In, in industrial use. I mean, or in, in the, and certainly in the industrial water, wastewater. Well, I also think there's, there's uh, maybe a lack of incentives to reduce the amount of, uh, of, of, of the water that, that, that is consumed in a, in a company. And also for the, for the wastewater, industrial wastewater, there's no separate legislation for processed water or cooling water or wastewater as such. It's, industrial wastewater is also wastewater, wastewater effluent. So, so, so what you suggest is more incentives for people to reduce their consumption of water yes. in the industry. Yes. And secondly, a more nuanced, more detailed regulation for industrial wastewater. Is that what you're and, saying? And I would also say a better control of what's actually discharged. And then better enforcement of the existing regulation. Yes. Right, okay. Am I forcing it? Okay, good. Right, there we are. Uh, hands gone up, but I'd love to ask you the question, but I can't. I've got 51 seconds. 51 seconds. Uh, uh, our representative for Marafik in Jubel, he's got a massive, got the largest industrial complex in the Middle East, so you're dealing with a massive amount of effluent. I'd love to ask you a question, but I haven't got enough time. Uh, and can you just grab the panel? Uh, and, and, and share it with you. I'm asking them this last question. We've now got 26 seconds. You've all got a sentence to answer the question, which is, in the next 12 months, in the next 12 months, what would you like to see changed to improve the way industry either consumes or disposes of its water in the next 12 months? One thing, Tissia. I'll start with you, Tissia, yeah. Now we're we'll moving in this direction. <laughs> I thought I can just evaluate. Uh, no, no, I'm starting with you now, Tissia, come on. <laughs> to, to improve. Um, one thing. One thing. I would say uh, environmental awareness. Sorry? Environment, increase environmental okay, awareness. Okay, education. So yeah. people are more aware of it. Klaus? Yes, same direction. Transparency, which starts with data, but also certainly the awareness. Okay, so better information about how water is, how much is used, consumed. So within a company, they have better information about their water and where it's going. Alp. I would say the same. Awareness that this is possible. And if we do not invest today, the water price will be even higher in the next 20, 30 years. Okay, education awareness. And, and uh, has some last word in this session. I, I think, um, I'm not trying to be a show off, but I think awareness, we, it's already covered in Adno Group. And uh, uh, what we'd like to see, what we, we are moving towards is, is um, in, uh, introducing uh, water f footprinting for the industry. Uh, so so, that, so much we, more for in the industrial sector. For the industrial sector, yes. Yeah, so there's so more that, information yes, uh, about but, how much water is used, yeah. how sustainable that is, and how it's reused. Yeah, but our, our data is available on the internet. You could always log in on the website, adnoc.ae, you'll see our sustainability reports. So we are transparent. Excellent. Well, thank you very much thank to you. our panel. My, my wish is that all your dreams come true. Thank you. Very much. So I'm allowed to say silly things like that. Uh, okay, well, that's the end of this session. Uh, we are now moving on to the last formal session of the last two formal sessions of the conference, uh, cities and stormwater management, before our roundtables, which begin after the coffee break at 20 past four. Uh, but um, before you we uh, leap move on. I want you to show your appreciation to our panelists.